Welcome to Project Ozone 2, Kappa Mode, Episode 5. Everybody loves a good chunk error. Oh, we're out of bullets. Where did all that experience come from? I have no clue what's happening right now. It's glowing. So I think we do this and we run. Should have just vein mine that, to be honest. I planned this correctly. There's no blood knight. Get rid of him. He's a real problem. Okay, so a stack in one's pretty good, actually. I think this thing is picking up. It would appear I ran out of lava, so I'm going to get rid of these ducks and the servo, and hopefully this is faster. I knew there was a reason I kept these rewards. Based. Oh yeah, we're actually holding a level now. I have no clue what could be using all my lava. I'm pretty sure it's not this generator, because it actually runs very slowly. It's very efficient. I have most of the stuff automated. Alternator. I don't have this automated, but all the subcomponents. Pretty easy to make. Logistics pipes. Auto crafting is awesome. Got a second one there. I just haven't bothered setting it up yet. I went overkill on these boilers, but basically it slowly just kind of runs through and fills up buckets. And I've got filters to just keep one item in the inventory. And you can see how slowly it works. The temperature actually dropped off. That's why we have no power. Okay, a little earlier I was wondering why I ran out of power in there, and I thought it was because I was running too many machines. Ultimately, I don't know how this thing works. We just jam it full of steam, make some volts here. I didn't find too many videos on this. Got these magnetic generators running. They can store like 32,000 RF, but they only can output 400 RF. So between the four of them, 1600 RF. When I added six, the whole system kind of shut down, so it must uh, overload this voltage here. Didn't spend too much time troubleshooting it. Basically, I got a ton of immersive wires doing their thing. There's some catching up to do, but the smeltery, the smeltery floor, tower, I guess, is fully done. You'll notice my FPS is kind of dropping below 60. I've actually thrown V-Sync on. I don't know if it helps or makes things worse. I've never actually bothered to use it before, but it hides labels. Maybe that'll help it. And I left this here to remind myself, but I've automated hardened glass. So basically, if you stick obsidian in a basin and add 72 lead, I think an ingot's 144, so you basically get two obsidian plus one lead ingot. is two of these hardened glass. So it's pretty cool how it works with logistics pipes. We have a supplier that's asking for 72, no partial, uh, no minimum mode sent. So over here on this gate, we have a supplier that's just trying to put one obsidian in here all the time. And then, I guess I gotta click on this. Items in inventory. As long as there's an obsidian in here, this is true. So if there's an obsidian in that casting basin, pipes on. We can see it blinking back here. The pipe's off, disable it. So it doesn't allow lead, molten lead to go in here. And there's a provider on the back of this drawer. So my whole network knows about it. I can easily request it now. And then here's my lead smeltery with my blocks of lead. The pipe here, I've got a tank with a provider, so that's able to request lead. I'm sure this whole network is greatly adding to my FPS decline, but it's too cool. And if you weren't bored of logistics pipes already, here's another one. So here's the satellite logistics pipes that I was talking about in previous episodes. I had to do some reading on the, on the wiki or on the Reddit. 
because this didn't make a lot of sense to me. A crafting pipe can send additional inputs here. Cool. What does that mean? Well, I got these two presses and I got uh, gears inside them. I plan on making plates, maybe more gears and more plates. I haven't set up the plates yet. Basically, this satellite pipe is going to be set to one. Then we've got a chest with two hoppers. And as long as I don't have any timing issues, they should pull an even amount. And then this is where the items go. So this is the, the brains of it. I've got a Mark IV, Mach IV, whatever it's called. And it gives you four of these slots for modules. I would have liked to have made a Mach 5 because it can hold eight. Problem is we don't have the diamond chipset automated yet. It's far too slow to wait for this. I've got tons of diamond and redstone now, but not enough quick power. But the Mach 4, very cheap to make. We've got a recipe in here. So instead of sending in inputs and then getting an output, like the furnaces from previous episodes, here you tell it, okay, you're gonna be on satellite one. And if I give you eight iron ingots as an input, you're going to return two gears. I could have done, you know, four, one. And I might have to do that if I continue to have timing issues, which I'll talk about in a second. And then gold is the other gear I have set up. If we search gears here, let's say I only ask for one. Let's ask for three, actually. The problem arises if my ingots arrive at different times. Here it comes. No noise for it, eh? That's weird. Noise is on. Well, they got deposited in there, and then this thing was smart enough to know that it was waiting. It's only failed me once, but let's try to do this again here. Let's ask for three gears. Let's click on this. You can see the particles. You can see it's waiting to see two gears. And as soon as it does, recipe is complete. That's kind of another way to find broken automation. Got no clue what a lot of the rest of this is. So what I think I'm going to do with these two smelteries maybe is alloy like Electrum and Invar. I probably should just make an Endario alloy furnace. Whoops. Oh, interesting. Maybe if it gets too laggy, I can play with this. I didn't realize this was a performance thing. But yeah, I could make alloys in the smelteries. Originally, I was thinking I was going to pour gears from a tinker smeltery, but I think I'll just use the presses, and it's the same idea. You'd have the satellite pushing in, and then your casting tables would go back to this piece. I got another requesting table up here, which is pretty cool. So now I don't have to go all the way down. Floor two, ground floor, and then right in here. Look at this. The crystal chest. So I have an item sink in here. And a provider, of course, to provide items. But this guy set the default route. I talked about last episode not wanting to do that. Because potentially, tons of stuff could get sent here if I don't have everything configured properly. But right now, it all looks okay. Minus one change over here. So this firewall is pretty cool. Filtered items are blocked, boom, boom, boom. And then we allow power to go through to power this. And then everything else is set to allow because I figure why not. That way, none of the extra stuff coming from these hammers should get sent back to fill that chest. And then everything else has a void upgrade. So it's always gonna think it can stuff it in these drawers and void extra. So I shouldn't get any overflow from this room. I guess another video will be improving this setup.
because they're starved for power. If you're wondering what that noise was, it's the Aether Portal. Aether 2. So overall, this building I think is pretty cool. Like the structure of it. Not exactly a huge fan of the gray. Kind of boring, but I guess everything in Minecraft's gray. I quite like this. I can actually imagine building this just kind of taller. An open skeleton. So it looks like an incomplete skyscraper. My favorite thing about this tree farm is it's like a moving art piece. Every time I come around to my base, it looks a little different. Sometimes it's got leaves, sometimes it's weird shapes. It's however it decides to get turned off. And speaking of this thing, I have to make a correction from a previous episode. I had thought you could not redstone control these machines. Mine factory reloaded. You can. As you can see, it's disabled. And the idle is locked. So, this is way better than what I had shown in previous episode. Basically, if there's space in the inventory, go high. And right now it's low. It might look high, but it's actually off. If it's off, then put a redstone signal. Which happens to touch that and then disable it. So I've got the circuit breaker and all the other gates and all that that were configured down here. They're all gone. And I actually figured that out when I was building this one. So it's the same idea. A gate disabling the harvester when the rubber is full. And then the rest of the stuff just gets voided. I probably could have just tore that down and made this and used this wood. But I think that kind of moving... All structure is kind of cool. I would always change the shape. I think that looks pretty cool. So I made this lightning rod base. I've never made one of these before. And I will say we're at what day 392 and it's probably been easily 100 days. This has not got any lightning. And I don't sleep all the time anymore because that magnum torch makes it for and I got so much light in this area, there's no reason to sleep, right? So I don't know why I'm not getting thunderstorms. That's kind of a bummer. And the reason I made it is because I was just trying to do some questing just to kind of make actual progress. Because for so much time so far in this world, I've been ignoring the quest book. Like here, I have the turbine made, but it's not unlocked because I haven't done the sterling. So I should tidy this stuff up. I was trying to make this, but I have no clue how to make the Erebus. This red gem, apparently it's a dimension. I've got no clue what the Erebus is, or how it works, or how to pronounce it even. So all of this is totally achievable. Yeah, I've got the alloy stuff now. Then this guy... Uh oh, what's this? So I really cannot make the agricraft farming station without this seed. That's rough. Yeah, that's not too far away, actually. Need some bedrock. Oh, wow, you can make bedrock? Probably a bad idea placing bedrock in my world, especially if I don't know where I want it to stay. Chip sets. Oh yeah, I've made a bunch of them, but not all of them. You'll notice I moved the blaze spawner setup from last episode. Still got some artifacts to clean up. What I'm imagining here is I'm going to have a drawer network, but I'm also going to have logistics pipes over here. It's going to be trashing garbage loot bags recycling them or just trashing them I haven't decided I got my grinder moved got it powered here and I wanted to play around with this redneck controller I suppose it makes more sense just demonstrating this than talking about it so we're gonna have two two inputs here we're gonna have a lever right now that's gonna simulate a full inventory down below. Imagine this is complete. 
and we detect if there's too many drops and there's nowhere for them to go. So I don't want items to be laggy, right? I want to be able to shut this off. That's what this is going to simulate. The next thing I want to simulate is me having an override. Now I may have a computer at some point, or I may have some remote way of turning this off. Let's say my game FPS or TPS, TPS, let's say it gets really bad. I want to have ways of sh shutting off certain systems, whether it's the tree farms or it's the saving setup or it's the tinker smelteries. I haven't implemented any of it yet, but I guess I might as well start here. So taking this precision hammer from Mine Factory Reloaded. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. So you can actually see the working area of your upgrades with the precision hammer. As long as you're holding it, you can even see way back there. The rubber tree farm. So that's pretty cool. I didn't know that's how this worked. But anyways, let's say orange and magenta are my inputs. Now, I don't like using white because that's like the default thing and weird stuff can happen if you forget to configure something. I'm having some technical difficulties. For some reason, these cables actually connect to the cobblestone, and I don't like that. You can see why they call it the precision hammer. Got to definitely hit the right hitbox. And we got this thing. And if it wasn't discussed already, the Rednet controller is shockingly cheap. I really like in this mod pack how you're not gated by some cool automation options. This looks a little overwhelming at first, but basically it's like a PLC. I think that's why they call it a ERC, Programmable Logic Controller instead of RedNet. There's tons of options here. I learned about a couple of them in school once upon a time, but for the most part, I don't know how to use a majority of them, I would assume, but it doesn't matter. Right now, all I care about is ore. So I'm going to have two inputs. And I see right now, I can see right now, you can get really deep into this. You can have constants, you can pass variables, you can have six pages without installing additional cards. You can see there's actually room to put in more circuit boards, IO expansions. But I only really probably need this one page for the simple circuit, but you can actually make inputs and outputs that actually pass variables to like the next whatever you call these things there's a word for it we don't want a constant or a variable we want io on the i think that stands for down down up left right so we're down or we're not i think this is the front perspective so we're left and we're up Whoops. So we're left, we're up. Sorry, no, we're not. We're left on both of them. So it's either going to be the left orange or the left magenta. Assuming that's correct. If either of those are true, right now they're both false, then we're going to output in the up direction on blue. Hopefully that makes sense, and hopefully that works. I don't know what this button does. If we turn this guy on, or off, or that one, or them both on, just a simple OR gate. Now this is the other piece of the puzzle. My, red, my redstone transmitter. And just quickly mentioning, I was shocked at the cost of this. Shiny, which is no problem. We were sitting platinum. But the rock wool, I fortunately have a little bit of slag. And when I say a little bit, I guess I mean 545. But I'm not making it anymore because we're making this type of slag. And unfortunately, since I decided to start using blocks of iron, it makes that type of slag. Versus if I was just using iron ingots, it uses this type of slag. Just got to remind myself that the Or Dictionary game was not strong in these old versions.
So I got the redstone receiver here, the redstone transmitter. So thinking here is, is the blaze spawner, if it's sitting on top of cursed earth in this version of extra utilities, it actually spawns indefinitely when the player's not around. As far as I know in this version, the only way to make these spawners work is cursed earth, which is kind of cool. But if I place one piece there, for my testing world, as long as the redstone lamps are fully in this area, it should spawn, it should stop the spawning. So I'm going to rework this system later. It's just kind of, again, just for demonstrations. But if we were to crank this guy to... Aha, here's the problem though, is we're outputting up on the up network. What if we did a variable, variable one? I don't really know what I'm doing right now. A fan? Goodness. Okay, so if we have a variable of one, so from this page, Either of these are on, our variable one goes true. So then if we come here and we say variable one, we want you to fan out. So we're going to have on the up, it's going to be cyan, but then also on the left is going to be not cyan, light blue. I think this will work, if that makes sense. Either of these come in, variable one goes true. We read variable one here, we fan it out to up and left. I just as easily could have placed this up there but it's supposed to be an example so that's cool as you can see this did not work because I forgot to set this to light blue very cool Up off everything comes on how exciting that's all going to get moved it's just hasn't been done yet Now, as long as they don't see the player, they should just draw. The machine's stuck with items. Oops. So I did wonder about how slow it is. Um, you'll notice that these grinders don't have an upgrade, an add-on. What are they called? These things. The upgrades. There's no slot for it. Apparently, the idea is it's so overpowered, they only give you a 5x5, five five, which works Pretty perfect, coincidentally. I didn't design this 5x5 five five on purpose for that. When I first made this this building, it was actually using iron spikes. But I suppose I could put another grinder there. I find this gets too slow. Okay, so it's been a few minutes here. I guess because it's daytime, nothing's going to spawn. And right as I say that, a blood mood is rising. So there's just enough daylight to stop spawning in this one spot. But as soon as it becomes dark, Mobs are only going to spawn there. So the only reason the redstone lamps actually deactivate the blazes is because it's a two block height. But look at that. He spawned not where I thought he was going to. Well, this is unfortunate. You know what? They're actually spawning in this wall. Tick tock. Tick tock. Can't sleep through. Blood Moon. Apparently, Magnum Torch stops Cursed Earth spawning. But it doesn't stop this type of Cursed Earth spawning. Which I think is really unfortunate because the Magnum Torch is an extra utilities block. Maybe it's not the end of the world having a leggy mob farm further away from the base, but definitely is a little disappointing. I had just started my logistics network here. But I guess there's no point continuing. 
What a fantastic way to end the episode. Actually, if there was one plus, the full-size glass blocks behind me, they actually do seem to stop the blaze spawning. So they're not spawning on the pane anymore, on the black cobblestone. So I'll probably leave the blaze spawner here. I unfortunately just have to move the, the loot farm somewhere else. Kind of a wasted building. <laughs>